オース。I'm 渡辺真司、The Lynch of Yuigaryu Karate. Today's video is an analysis of Haishuke of Naihanchi following the previous one. Let's go then. Oath. Let's start with a quick recap from last time. Pressing your heels together and step hard on your heels. Stand up straight as if you are being pulled from above. Then bow. Align your toes and sit back a little. Lift your arms and turn them over. Keep your hands together, arms extend as far as possible, and press them slightly forward. Look first to the left, then to the right. At this point, it is easier to align the vertical center of gravity by looking left and then right, than by simply looking right. Be the close touch, set to the right hand stance, and high shoot again. Probably uh, many schools teach that you should set this stance and do the high shoot again at the same time. But I do it separately now because my hand is a kata in which you learn to divide your body into upper and lower parts and move them separately. And this Haishuke contains centrifugal force and the force of the COC, center of gravity shift. I'm not describing it as Haishuke, but it can be interpreted and describe it as Haishu Uchi. However, uh, if you limit the interpretation of this movement to Uke and modify it to a movement that prioritizes centrifugal force over COZ shift, it becomes Haito Uke. This is a new Naihanshi modified by Ito's Anko. And that was the end of the last issue, right? Today uh, we will continue from here. Where uh, the Hikite is placed during this Hashuke varies from school to school. There are advantages and disadvantages to both high and low positions. We must consider this in relation to elbow punch and kyakuzuki later on. So let's do that in detail at the time. For now, in my Yuigaryu Karate, I use the middle position. One fist below the line of the solar plexus. Now, uh, there is one problem that arises if you take the hikite high at this point. When you try to exert force on the haishu uke, the movement of the hikite causes the seosis to shift upward, and this upward shift of the seosis will inhibit the exertion of force to the side. You can understand what I mean, <laughs> right? Uh, there, there are two ways to solve this problem. The first way is to predict the arms to the height before entering the Haishuke movement. As many of you may have already noticed, this is the method of Wadori's Naihanshi. This is also a good method, but this allows you to use the force of the COZ shift. But 
that centrifugal force is weakened. Another solution is to offset the upward motion of the COZ of the arms by sinking the body. Uh, this is the general knife hunch that I mentioned earlier, which finishes up the legs and arms movement at the same time. Uh, however, uh, this can be a very difficult movement. The horizontal and vertical movements must be harmonized, and at the same time, the arm movements must be synchronized with the leg movements. At this time, uh, however, the arms and legs should not be interlocked. This timing must be right on the premise that the body can be divided up and down and moved separately. This can be a really, really difficult movement. And one more, uh, Kata teaches you the physical manipulations necessary for fighting, but it also teaches you the strategies necessary for fighting. Earlier, I explained the difficulty of haishu-uke in terms of physical migration, but also from a strategic point of view, it requires, uh, it requires a great deal of difficulty here as well. Naihanch teaches you not to defend steadily first. If you are on the defensive, your opponent will try to break that defensive position somehow. In this case, you don't know whether they will try to break your defense from. So, uh, in Naihanch, it teaches you to let the guard down and do as an opponent. Then they will attack you. At this time, do not run away. You must be moving forward with courage. Then do uke with the power of centrifugal force and seal the shift to break the opponent's posture and lead to an attack. Or this may be an attack instead of a uke. Counter with a blow using the power of centrifugal force and seal the shift. That's what Naihanch teaches you. In other words, you are running here the ultimate move which is very difficult from both a physical manipulation and a strategic point of view, but is therefore effective. Uh, as we all know, uh, Naihach is a very basic kata in many shurite or tomarite schools. And uh, since it is the shortest kata, there are many dojos that the beginners start running from this kata probably. However, the first move is ultimately difficult. There is no way a beginner can do it. Nevertheless, they are told to do that. What does this mean? In fact, this is often the case not only in karate, but also in kenjutsu, jujutsu, and other old Japanese martial arts. There are so many episodes in which a student trains and trains, and after mastering various movements and techniques, at the end of his training, his sensei tells him, this is the ultimate one, and that technique was the first and simplest technique he learned when he was a beginner. What does this mean? 
I guess this is a so called imprinting. Imprinting that is when an animal is born, it assumes the first thing it sees is its mother and follows and immediately. The ultimate technique is shown first. It doesn't matter if you can't do it, or rather, you never can. However, the first time you see it, it is deeply imprinted in your subconscious. It becomes an intangible asset that will live on in the future. Or well, uh, it could uh, it could also be said that the way where the goal is shown first and then the process leading up to the goal is taught step by step. Uh, however, uh, as I explained earlier, I am now doing this with separate timing for the arms and legs. I really want to do that. Uh, I really want to do them at the same time because I understand that the shikite movement here is interfering with the haishuke movement. But uh, unfortunately, I have given up on that for now. For example, uh, also here on YouTube, I have seen many senses of various schools showing their own naihanshu. But um, very sorry, from my point of view, I can't find anything that says this is it. So uh, I usually do things separately. But sometimes I'm trying to do things at the same time while asking, while asking myself, is this how it should be done? Or maybe not. My current level is like that. Uh, please try it, you two. Again, just doing it at the same time is not enough. What I am showing you now is just doing it at the same time. In other words, the arms and legs are working together. So, for example, if I stop the arm move in the middle of the movement, the leg will also stop. Conversely, if the leg is stopped, the arm will also stop. That is not good enough. The arms and the legs must be separate, moving separately, and this movement finish over at the same time. It is really, really difficult. And please practice also nine hands, which start to the left. One of the answer to the question of what nine hands is, is the kata almost symmetry. Symmetry means that it is easy to notice the difference in balance between the left and the right sides. When you do nine hands, you may find that you can do the right side well, but you cannot do the left side well, or vice versa. Uh, this means that there is a bad habit of movement or posture, and that the balance between the left and right sides is not correct. When you do nine hands, you will know, you will notice the deviation. By practicing nine hands repeatedly to try to eliminate that difference between the left and right sides of the move, the balance of the body will be naturally adjusted. Uh, repetitive one-sided movement cause the body to become distorted more and more. If you are still young, 
and your muscles and tendons are strong and flexible. This may not be a problem, but as you age, uh, but as you age, the strain will manifest itself as back and neck pain. Uh, healthcare is essential if you want to stay strong as you age. The best way to do this is to combine training and healthcare. The more you train, the more healthier you will be. That is the best way. Nihansh teaches you to stand in a way that accepts gravity most comfortably by your skeleton and to use and fight without distorting your body. And uh, because it is almost symmetrical, the more you practice, the more balanced your body becomes. It's part of training. And uh, by doing the nine hands that moves to the left, as well as those that move to the right, you can make it not almost, but perfectly symmetrical. Please try it. Oh, uh, well, uh, that's it for today's video. How was it? If you liked it, please click the good button and subscribe to my channel. And I'm also waiting for your comments. Next time, let's analyze the elbow punch movement. Please look forward to it. Awesome.